Hey, welcome to Generative Art with Flutter. This video is a part of a series of videos where I create a small animation effect using Flutter Canvas and show you how to code it up. In this episode, I'm going to create this mesmerizing rotating animation. Ooh, so hypnotizing. I'm feeling dizzy already. Oh, now allow me to show you how this is done. This again is a simple animation when you break it down to individual parts. First thing to do is to draw a rectangle in the middle of the screen. How uncharacteristic. Like before, we will use the particle framework we always use. Here I am creating a particle with color, position and a radius. Paint a canvas is where we draw our particles and let's clean this up a bit from the previous time. So in the paint a canvas, we create a rectangle centered around a given point. That point is the position of the particle. The radius is the width and height of the rectangle. Let's set the drawing style to stroke and set a stroke width. We don't need to uh, use the blend mode yet. We will come to that later. Okay, where the f is that red? <laughs> oh great, it's at the zero zero. Let's add the offset and try again. Offset brings a point to the center of the screen. Uh, we've done this many times now. Hurrah! Raw. We have a rectangle in the middle. This is a great result. Now it's a matter of drawing many rectangles, but we will draw them one inside the other. We can easily do this by varying the radius property of the particle. Alright, that's a lot of rectangles but it's a bit boring. Let's rotate each rectangle by a small amount. For this, we use alpha property of the particle. Here we are in the particle class. Let's remove these properties that we don't use anymore. There, nice and clean. So the computation for alpha is pretty simple. We increase the alpha value by a degree for each, each successive rectangle. In order to draw rotated rectangles, we need to do a little dance. First we need to move the canvas to the center of the screen, then rotate the canvas by alpha, and then draw the rectangle. We also need to save and restore the context, so that each rectangle will start at the origin which is at the top left corner, and do the same process all over again. This is because all drawing operations are done relative to the canvas, and the canvas can be placed anywhere on the screen. So now we're gonna try and move these rectangles. It's quite simple. We just have to increment the alpha value by a small amount on each update. This is all fine and dandy, but we want more. We don't want all the rectangles to rotate at the same, same speed. We want them to rotate at different speeds. For example, inner rectangles should rotate faster than the outer ones. In order to do that, we introduce another property in the particle called alpha d. In it, we store a small delta value, which varies as we increase the radius. Okay, that should fix it. All right, all right. Now it's looking like something. Now that we have the motion effect done, let's go and bling this up. First, let's get some colors and assign them to each rectangle. For simplicity, I used three colors here, but experiment and find the best for yourself. I found this fantastic color palette website by which I will steal the colors from.
Now I'm going to use Perlin Noise to get a smooth variation between these two color sets and assign that color to each particle. The trick here is that I'm going to interpolate between two colors using the Perlin Noise value I receive. This experiment is okay, but as you'd see later, a sign function could do the variation much faster and looks much better. Now is a good time to fill the rectangles, but first we have to make sure we draw them in reverse order, so that smaller rectangles are on, on top of the larger ones, otherwise all we will see is this slice of cheese. <laughs> So now we will attempt to change the colors in the update function. We'll just replicate the same process as before. As you can see, Perlin blending is very slow and subtle. There's a lot of tinkering you can do here to find different ways of uh, setting colors. But I'm going to go with sign function because it is faster and color animation looks good. And here we go. Sometimes the simplest gives the best results. So there's a lot to experiment here. You can find different ways of setting colors, blend modes, and so on. So go forth and tinker. If you enjoy what I create, please take a few seconds to like, share and subscribe. Also leave a comment if something is not clear. I will try my best to answer all your questions. Until next time.